Hello guys. Um, I've been quite busy for the past few weeks. I have been with exams but I think I have finished. So I wanted to um, record a video and I wanted it to be something that I've been struggling with for years that I'm still struggling with but I feel like God has been really exposing things um, in my life in 2020 it started in 2020 um, and I wanted to talk about fear I want to talk about thoughts too which is very closely related to it they were fear was the root of them but if I do both combined it's just gonna be way too long so there's no way I'm gonna be able to like there's no way I'm gonna be able to engage you guys for so long so I'm just gonna do fear first and then I'm gonna do thoughts and it actually makes sense because the roots of my thoughts, the things that I've been struggling with, come from fear. So it, it, it builds a base for it. So I just want to, again, give glory to God for allowing me to be here because I don't deserve it at all. And um, I'm very thankful that he has been working in me and that he has been exposing these lies that I've been believing in for so long. And so I honestly, um, I just want to be help to others and I hope that I don't know who you are, but I hope that through this um, testimony, through my story, that you can be identified with these things and that they can help you to deal with with whatever you're dealing with and that if you don't know Christ, well, that you may come to him and that you may know that he's the answer to everything. So I'm just, I have quite a few verses, so I don't know really where to begin. I'm going to guess, I'm going to start a bit with my story and then I'm going to dig into some verses. But the main... Um, few verses that I'm going to be um, going deeper in it's Ephesians 6 so if you just want to get it ready but I'm going to be talking about other few verses too so I'm going to be flipping back and forth um, but the main topic I'm going to get it from Ephesians 6 so if you just want to get that for sure um, but okay so when I became a Christian I knew from I just knew there's just some things that you just know, like God just kind of puts in your heart and you just know they're from God. And I just knew from the very start that, um, give me one second, so I'm just standing right beside the radiator and it's really hot. So, um, but basically since I converted, I knew, I just felt within my spirit that I was, my calling was preaching. I just knew it. And so I honestly prayed a lot about it, like, God, you know, use me and things like that. And and I knew one thing that I struggled with, with was fear of man. And not just only fear of man, but fear of failing and not being enough and falling so many times that one day God will just walk away. Or not necessarily him walking away, but by so many mistakes, I would just push him too far. You know what I mean? So it basically started then. And I had this amazing desire for it. Like I genuinely like, love to preach. Like when I have preached to some of my friends, um, I loved it. Like I, 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 it's really hard to explain. I, you know, when you have a calling, it, for you maybe music or I don't know, maybe through words, maybe God uses you with words or preaching like me like my words i meant like maybe writing like poems or songs or stories or books things like that and i don't know which way god called you but i'm sure that if you're called for worship music whatever it is you know the feeling that what you feel when god has used you is you and so i i haven't been a person that has had many friends throughout the whole life but since i converted to most of my my friends I have preached to some were kind of harder to I'm not gonna lie so I know that they were preached through my social media because in person it was definitely a lot harder to reach them but most I can tell you that two of them I didn't personally preach but for all the rest I have personally came up with the good news of Jesus Christ which for you is like oh well that's what you're supposed to do but like, and it is, but at the same time, it's extremely hard for me. 
and it's not because I'm ashamed because God knows if I was ashamed I wouldn't be making this video in the first place I wouldn't I wouldn't have shared Jesus with anyone it's just that I found it very hard to bring Jesus into a conversation some people you see them and like for example, my boyfriend, he just does it perfectly. Like, I don't know how he does it. My mom, too. She's, like, an expert on that. But for me, it's kind of harder to bring Jesus into the conversation. That's what I struggle with. Not with actually speaking about him, but kind of introducing the topic, let's say. And so, um, I realized that I had that fear of man kind of thing. Like, but... I knew that I wanted. I knew that I... I knew that this is what I... What I, I was not made for ultimately because I was made for to live for Jesus but a way that you can serve Jesus is specifically for me because that's my calling is through preaching and so I I struggled with it for a long time with fear and and I thought it was normal you know for example I thought that you know some people struggle with character like I struggle with character because I have a very strong character when you're a Latina you usually do but I have a very strong character that, you know, God has been, it, it has been taking years for God to change me and that's never going to stop. It's a continuous process. But personally, that's my number one struggle that I would definitely think. There's more, but obviously for you, I don't know, maybe drinks, alcohol or anything. Sexual desires is one that I struggle with for a long time too and still do. So whatever it is that you personally struggle with. I thought that that was just like a struggle, like kind of like, like it's normal to feel fear, kind of like, and I didn't know that it was a weapon that the devil used against Christians. I just thought it was like a struggle. Like I struggle with character, you may struggle with drinks. Well, I struggle with fear, like, which we do struggle, but I was too comfortable with it. Like, like as if it was normal for me to experience that amount of fear. I didn't know, I know it sounds crazy, I guess, but I didn't honestly know that those that, that was a weapon. And I just thought it was normal for me to experience that much fear. But, so I kind of like, there's one thing I saw on the internet that honestly sh it shook me to the core since I read it. And it was like, when you like let the lies of the enemy go into your mind, they go into your heart and then they become part of who you are. And that last part, they become part of who you are is so true. And I'm telling you from my story, I got to the point where I believed so many of these lies, like, oh, if, you know, if you do go to a trial or whatever, you're going to fail God and you're going to lose him. And if, I don't know, these things like that. And I was terrified because God, the devil knew that, knows that I want to please God. And he used that to twist it against me. You know what I'm trying to say? And it got to the level where I was so afraid of failing that I would just never even try. And that is with everything. It's not just spiritually. It's with absolutely everything. Relationships, things to do with school, jobs, all of that. I will be terrified of getting a job. I will be terrified of an interview. All these things because I'm so afraid of failing. And I've been so... I've been allowing these lies to become... Uh, true they have, I've allowed they have almost become true to me because I've allowed them to take so much control over my mind that they are no longer just lies they are like a part of me now I'm afraid now I'm like I'm not able I'm gonna fail that's like who I saw myself as and I still struggle with it and so oh and so that that have went for a long time. I, I mean, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior when I was 15. It took me around a year to take it seriously because I met a guy. And that did, you know, make me go off and on the path for a bit. And so it took me around a year, roughly. So let's say that around 2016. I said 2015 because that's when it started. Like I knew that I was on and off, but I'm telling you, I know God was through it all. Because there were some, there was just things that God really prevented me from doing. Like, honestly, I just feel like when God sees someone that wants to truly serve him, like, not give anything to themselves, but give everything away to him. I'm 
I just I've seen it in my life. God is gonna move everything, every mountain, everything, he's gonna move it to find you. I like God is gonna move everything that he needs to move in order to find you. And I believe that for everyone, but I specifically believe that too for those who really, really want to love God. Because there are some people that just want to pl play with the grace of God. And to those, I'm not saying God doesn't, you know, call to. God calls to everyone. God desires everyone to repent. But God is God. And you cannot fool God. And if he knows that if you're trying to just use his grace as a playground, I mean, you know, that's different. However, I'm off topic. I really seen the hand of God throughout that year. I, cause I I really wanted to see God. Like I really wanted God, but I didn't know that the, this guy was honestly sent by the enemy to distract me. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything before I came to Christ. I did not know anything. Name it. I don't know it. Nothing. You know. I didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. I didn't know there was a rapture. I didn't know whatsoever the cross meant nothing. I always believed in God and I always believed like, oh, Jesus died. But what did that mean to me? I don't know. I had no clue. I had no biblical understanding and understanding, no knowledge. I didn't know what attacks were. I didn't know anything of that. Nothing. You name it, <laughs> I really didn't know it. So I really started into my path with God knowing absolutely nothing. And I didn't have a community. I didn't go to church. I didn't know the necessity of going to church either. It actually took God. God spoke to me and my mom for a long time. Go to church. Until we found the church. And I didn't have a community at all. I didn't have a pastor. I didn't have all these things. I didn't have it. So I was really on my own. And honestly, most everything of the basics, everything that I know, most of it because I have used preachings, it literally has been God in me in my room. That is honestly one of the benefits that I took from being, from not having a community in that sense. I'm not uh, in any house supporting to not be in a community. I'm just saying that one of the benefits, I guess, was that it, I had no other like way to know but through the Bible, where sometimes we get so caught up with, oh, let's listen to this preaching, let's listen to that preaching. Now we forget about actually going to the word of God. And so that's at least one benefit, let's say, that you want to point out. But anyway. Whew. So, yes. I struggle with a lot of it. With fear and all of that stuff. And um, that has been going on for a long time. I've been quite isolated in um Christian community. I, I do go to a church now. I am going to... Um, well, now I'm trying actually a new one, but in my town in Gori, I, I was going to one. Like, I'm still part of that, I guess, but I'm, I'm, I tried a new church. And basically, it's only now, it's only in 2020 that uh, God has been teaching me the importance of community. I, it honestly, it goes really beyond what I can talk about in a video. This, honestly, the roots of all of this comes through my childhood, too. The reason why I've been so filled with fear. It I don't it's not just enemy lines, it's not just that. It's it's definitely the experiences through my childhood and don't get me wrong, I've had an amazing childhood. I honestly God has blessed me beyond compare for materialistically. I've always had everything I needed. I never missed any food in my table, any clothes, I could always go to school. I had honestly everything I needed. But I didn't have everything I needed emotionally. And in my house, mental health is it's not uh, it's not a t it's not a thing. It's not meaningful. And so, I honestly thought I was okay, but I God has been exposing like I'm honestly messed up. And so, God had been really exposing, and even to my boyfriend too, he had been like one a union community, community, community all the time, and. Even through the Bible, like when we read Ecclesiastes, that's the first book we started we studied together, and it said two is better than one. And then there's so many lies that I feel like through reading the Word, and it's important. That is very important 
people can definitely help you but it's only the word of god that like takes that mask or that veil that's not allowing you to see the lies that you're believing. It's only the word of God. Yes, my boyfriend did point a lot of things out that weren't true, but I didn't realize they were a lie until the word showed it to me. So don't be like putting your dependence on people and be like, it's good, it's important. It's really important, but you need to always go back to the word of God. It's the word of God, the ones that confronts you to the core that's the one. So always go back to that one um, as a foundation of everything you do. But anyways, um, <clears throat> there's there is things in my childhood. Let me be. Let me open up. I didn't. I wasn't raised with my dad, my biological dad. I wasn't raised with him. And when I was small, my mom moved to Ireland with my stepdad, and I was. I, and she left me with my grandma. And um, she did it to get a better life here because the quality of life, not that it's bad in Spain at all, not at all, but it can be a bit tough if you don't have a good job and stuff. They don't help you as much as they would here in Ireland with social welfare and all that stuff. But anyways, um, she went, she moved to Ireland and she was planning on taking me to move back to her, with, with her in Ireland, but we had a terrible relationship. We could not stand each other. So there was no way that was going to work. So I only moved to Ireland when I was 14 and she left when I was 33. So it kind of, you imagine how many years. So technically I wasn't even raised with a mother. And those things did affect me and I didn't realize. I didn't have an emotional support. I didn't have someone that I could go from back from school and talk to someone in my family. Like, I'm really bad. Even just silly things like a kid because I was just in primary school. Like, oh, I had a fight with my friend or look. My toy broke. These things that, as a kid, it's nonsense. But at least you have someone to talk about and uh, about it with. And so, I didn't have that. And so, those were big, big effects. That those caused big effects in my, in my, in my mental health. That God has only been exposing in 2020. And so, I started. God really started to show me. That even attitudes, like I honestly used to push people away a lot. For, my, for example, with my boyfriend, when we first met, um, well, we didn't actually meet because we started in social media, but when we first started to talk, I pushed him away. Like, I over, I lost count, but I pushed him away a lot. And I just, all of these kind of actions, reactions that I have, they all come from fear. Because not having my mom when I needed her to have to have her or not having my 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 dad when I needed him which I still don't have a relationship with because I've tried but there's just something about it that doesn't click I don't really trust him um and so there's no really interest from his side either so so I lost track this always happens to me. But anyways, I, yeah, not having my mom and not having my dad, not having that support, like, it kind of left me, I feel, with that feeling that everything or everyone that I love is just going to eventually be removed. And I'm going to get a bit emotional, but having those vital people taken away from you just not being there when they were supposed to, they really affected me and so I didn't know. So I have a lot of fears that don't only stem from enemies' lies but stream from my past and also the way with guys, the way that they wanted a specific thing that I wouldn't offer and because I didn't do it, well, you know, you get exchange to get it can you just get like oh yeah well i'll go to the next and those things do have an effect on you you know and so even i honestly i know that i know that i haven't i didn't give my life to god until i was 15 but i know that god has been with me since the beginning of my days because even things like that like don't give your body away i nobody i'm telling you no one in my family ever taught me to stay virgin until you get married married 
but that was like rooted in my soul that I could never get to that extent. And I'm telling you that had to be God because no one ever in my family taught it to me. And I just knew that that kind of level was always, that was just too far. That was no way. That was, don't even read, don't even think about that. And, and that's one, for example, one example that I know God has always been there for me, always taking care of me, even when I didn't even know him, because not being ever taught that in this society, let's be honest, who waits till marriage to have sex? So that honestly had to be God. And so anyways, I'm going to get to the, the verses, but basically I struggled for a long time in my worth to like, can I do this? And uh, there's so many, many doubts about myself. Like, can I do that? Like, am I good enough for this? And th these things, you know, and, and that's what I want to talk to you about because I'm sure so many people experience this, especially now with COVID fear, it's, it's building up honestly in people's houses like it has honestly terrified me sometimes looking at the news but for those who are in Christ that's what I made a video on Instagram about there's just nothing in this life worth hanging on to nothing and so for those who are in Christ for those who know Christ and if you don't know him this is for you there is hope in Jesus Christ I'm telling you the world is gonna get worse things are not gonna get better and I'm not trying this to scare you. I'm just being realistic because you just need to open the Bible and that's going to tell you. If you don't believe me, go to the Bible. In fact, you shouldn't believe me. You should go to the Bible regardless. But I'm telling you, the Bible says that things are going to get worse. You can check it for yourself. You can go to Matthew 24. Just read the whole Bible. You're going to know. And everything is just going to fade and our lives are going to fade. It's just not worth it. It's not worth hanging on to anything here. So do hold on to Jesus above all things. Hold on to Jesus. So let me begin with some of the verses. So I'm not going to start with Ephesians 6 yet. Let's go to, to 2 of Corinthians um, 10.5. Let's just go to that one first. So 10, 5. Okay, and it says, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. That reminds me of something. All of this fear and that led to worry, that led to so much doubt in my in my in my heart. That has really prevented me from knowing Christ, from experiencing that freedom that I can have in Christ. And that freedom to just sin. Um, that's that's not what you what you should want freedom in Christ for. If you do, then I don't think you know Christ. Freedom to. I sometimes said to God, God, what is it like to just trust in you? What's it like to see the whole army of Egypt behind you and the whole sea in front of you? Not having one weapon to defend yourself with, but to still, like Moses say, I'm just going to stand still and wait. What does that feel like? What does it feel like? What does it feel like to not have enough money to pay the bills, but trusting that God is my provider? What, what, what does that feel like? What does, being, what does resting in your presence mean? Because we read in the Bible and it's so beautiful, but like, what does that mean? How can I get that? You know, how can I have that? And so, and I feel like because of all the things that I've been affected with mentally, I feel like I've projected this view, this, I've projected things on God that are not God. Like, I always kind of believe that God wanted me alone. I'm not talking only romantically but like i was just supposed to be alone and like you know don't try to be friends with non-believers because then you're gonna fall in sin which obviously you do need to keep say you know a group of community that keep you know keep you accountable accountable but um that doesn't mean that you can't be friends with unbelievers how are you gonna be light to the darkness otherwise and and i just honestly believe that god was just Everything that I ever wanted, he was just going to strip it away. He was just going to take it off. And 
And to some people, he does give, he does, sorry, he does give the desire to not get married, you know. For me, that changed in 2018, but anyway, I'm not gonna go to that, but it's, it wasn't just that, it, it was like alone, like, kind of like I just had to be suffering all the time, you know, you know I know it sounds kind of crazy in you, but like, how could you in the world think that was God? But that's, that, that's what lies do, you know, when you are being fooled by the devil, you don't realize. And, and I always kind of have this like fear, like everything that I want, either God is not going to give or just God is going to take away. And obviously I'm talking about godly desires. I'm not talking about going drinking and going fornicating. I'm not talking about that kind of desires. Desires like marriage, desires like being a good wife or being a good husband, desires like having your family raised in the Lord, desires like preaching, desires like... Like, I'm working on a project and, and that project being out there, finishing it and, and helping people, those kind of things. And, you know, like, how is God going to do that? Like, we're in the end times. How is God going to do that? How is God going to do that? And anything, I, I just I just feel like it was all keeping me from knowing him fully. And I was, I've been praying this for so many weeks now, months now. Like, God, I just want to know you. But like I don't want to pick and choose. I want the harsh side of you, like kind of like the discipline, correction, um, challenge side of you, but also the father side of you, the protector side of you, the hide me under your wing side of you, you know. And I've just been like, God, I really just want to know you. Can you just please let me know you? Cause I'm tired. There has been times, guys, where it's been really hard, really frustrating, because I've just, I felt like I've been kind of like put ropes, ropes around me, trying to hold me tight, and you're trying to break free, but you really can't, like, it, it doesn't feel like you can, and it doesn't feel like you're ever going to be able to do it. It's so frustrating. To want to know God so deep and feeling that like you can't because you're constantly worrying and you're constantly fearing. But you're like, but just leave me alone because all I want to know is God. And, and all I want to do is know God because I'm so tired of myself. I'm tired of these fears. I'm tired of doubting me. I'm tired of not knowing who I am in Christ because I've been so week two i've been so so comfortable with lies with like honestly i'm gonna tell you something guys it's so much easier to stay as a victim it's honestly a lot easier to come to god and be like but god i don't feel able but it's super hard to get up and be like i'm gonna declare who i am in christ i'm gonna believe who god says i am that is so much harder that is so much harder and, and it's not easy. It's not easy training your mind, renewing your mind with the word of God to believe who you are in Christ. And let me just say something. It's not about you. Honestly, it's about God. And it's important to know. The reason why Moses was able to take the people out of Israel, out of Egypt, it wasn't because of Moses. It was because who was with Moses. And one of the key things to that you need to train your mind, renew your mind with, is knowing God. You need to know who God is, and you can't not know. You cannot. There's no excuse for this. You cannot. You cannot know who God is outside of scriptures. Yes, so many preachings can help you, but nothing ever will teach you as much as you in time. You and the Bible will, nothing. And so. Knowing who God is, it's, it's the first, it's just the base, the foundation of, of, of overcoming this and healing. But anyway, let me just continue. So we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And so I have this uh, few notes and it says a true knowledge the true understanding of who God is leads to right thinking okay 
In other words, knowing who God is and also who you are in Christ leads to a right mindset of who walks with you. When you know who God is and you know who you are in Christ, you're going to understand who is walking with you. And in knowing who is walking with you, you are going to be able to destroy the lies enemies. You're going to be able to be like, that's a lie. That's not what God sounds like. That's not that's not God. You're going to be able to identify his lies first, the devil's lies. And you're going to be able to fight them. To find them with, the, with God's strength. And let me just take one break for a second. 